Hello, once again, all you CISSP soon to bees. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. And every single day, like almost every day, I ask you two simple questions, maybe not so simple, uh, to help you get ready for your CISSP exam. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, this question is potentially messed up. So um, don't hate on me if you don't like this question. Here's the situation. A user has an image on their computer. They hash it, okay. using just like it shows in the question there. They then make a small change to the file, small one. Rename the file, and then hash it again. They send the new file to a friend via email. When the friend gets the email, they hash the image and they get the hash that you see right there. Six months later, an investigator is examining the user's computer looking for the beachweek.jpg image, which is the second file, the one that had been slightly modified. My question to you is, which of the following techniques could the investigator use to locate and determine if a similar file was on the system? A similar or the same file was on the system. Go ahead and give those answer choices a read. Give us some serious thought because this may not be something that's addressed in a lot of CISSP books. And I don't know if it's on the CISSP exam or not, but it's something I think that's just worthy of having in the back of your mind. So go ahead and give those answer choices some thought. And then when you're ready, click on play again and we will uh, we'll talk it through. All right, the first answer choice says you should hash all the files on the computer using SHA-256 and then look for matching hashes. Uh, the problem is, is that if he was looking for the vacation.jpg file, then he could find a matching hash if that file was still on the computer. But the beachweek.jpg file is the one that he's looking for. So um, just hashing that one, we know that because it was modified in a slight way, we're going to get a radically different hash than the original vacation.jpg, which is what you actually see in the question. The hashes are very different of the two files. So um, just by looking for matching hashes is not going to help him identify a similar file on the system. The next answer says that he should look in the sent items folder of the user's email. Certainly not a bad place to look, but in this particular instance, we're not counting on that of being a place where we're actually going to be able to go in and find this message because it's perfectly plausible, perfectly plausible that the person sent the email and then deleted the sent items folder. So uh, there may be no remnant of that in the, uh, in the user sent items. Next answer choice says look for files of a similar size and similar type. Um, it's pretty easy for files to be of a similar size. Lots of JPEGs are about the same size, so um, it's not really going to be a super awesome way to go in and try and find this file. Uh, I'm not saying somebody might not try something like that, but it really isn't going to be the one that you're going to expect to get a high degree of success with. I'm going to jump over the next answer, which is the right answer, and go and look at the very last one, which says that you should create SHA-1 hashes of all of the JPEGs on the system and then compare the last eight bits to look for uh, matching patterns. Uh, that is absolutely not true. Um, in fact, uh, that's just some junk I made up because that will not work at all. So don't try that. Which leaves us with the next to last answer, which is the right answer, which is to go in and use a fuzzy hashing tool. Fuzzy hashing is a technique that looks for similarities in files, not by hashing the entire file, but by hashing the file in parts. And so if somebody goes in and makes a subtle change to a file, yes, when you hash the now changed file, you're going to get a dramatically different hash, which would tell you simply that they are different. But in this case, with fuzzy hashing, what we're going to do is say hash the file in chunks or blocks and look for patterns within the blocks. Because there may be, if the file hasn't been changed a lot, a lot of similarities between the file or, or within the file, even though portions of it are going to be different. And the tools that go out and do this are designed to offer you a percentage of likeness to go in and say that this file and this file have 87% similar you know, material or, or this file and this file have 20% similar material. Um, it could be used by people who are doing, say, uh, virus research or malware research or looking for variants of existing pieces of malicious code um, that have simply been changed in a small way where you can go in and say that, that these guys are different but they are related because they have a lot of the same code 
uh, that's, that's built into them, even at the binary level. And we can do the same thing in this case with images, where we might be able to go in and say that these images, though different, are similar. And so therefore, uh, they may contain you know, things that, that appear to be the same, or might be a slightly modified version of a, of a similar image. Uh, one of the tools that's out there in the Linux world, if you're interested in looking at this, is called SSDeep, uh, that you can go in and look at and say you have two files that are subtly different and compare them, and SSDeep will come back and give you a percentage of likeness between the two. So, for now, just know that there's this thing called fuzzy hashing. Um, and fuzzy hashing allows you to go in and say how similar are two different files to one another. Uh, and has particular relevance in the world of um, analyzing malware, but could also be used in a variety of circumstances. So there's the question that I conjured here to go in and sort of illustrate that. All right, let's try something with a little bit lighter fare. You've just received a digitally signed email message. Which of the following do you need in order to validate the integrity and authenticity of the message? Give those answer choices a read. When you're ready, click on play again, and uh, assuming you paused it, and then click on play again and we can talk it through. The right answer here is that you need the sender's public key. Okay? If somebody is going to sign an email message, it means that they are going to hash the email message and then take that hash of the email message and they are going to encrypt it using their own private key. Therefore, you're going to need their public key in order to decrypt the hash okay, or decrypt the digital signature, which is going to reveal a hash and then hash the message yourself and compare the value that you got when you hashed it to the value that you recovered from the digital signature. If the two values are the same, you know that the message has integrity and it has not been modified since the person who is the holder of the private key that corresponds to this particular public key um, signed it. And in so much as you trust the signer, okay, you trust their certificate, you also you have a lot of things going on. You've got origin authentication because you know that it's from who you believe it to be from. You've got data integrity because the hashes match. And you've got non-repudiation because the person who signed it is the only person who has the private key, so they can't deny that they're the ones that sent the email. So lots of cool stuff with uh, hashing and asymmetric cryptography when you have a trusted authority behind it in the form of a public key infrastructure. So that's it. Two more questions down. First one was kind of a deep dive. I know that. Don't hate me. Um, if it's on the exam, awesome. If it's not, you guys can flame me in the comments below. Uh, but if you like the questions, again, I dig it if you clicked on like for them. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click on subscribe too, because I am doing these questions every single day. And I appreciate knowing that you're out there. So with that, see you tomorrow.